Hello again and welcome to part 2 of our Upgrading the Red Komodo series. This episode we'll be focusing on lenses and adapters. If you haven't, make sure to check out the other two videos in this series, links to which are in the description below. Anyway, let's get into some lenses. Housing the Komodo's fantastic sensor as a Canon RF mount. For those that aren't familiar, RF is Canon's latest generation mount for their mirrorless camera systems. I think RED chose very wisely with RF. RF mount has a short flange distance of just 20mm, which when compared to more traditional mounts like the 44mm flange of EF and 52mm of PL, it is much shorter. This means that manufacturers do not need to incorporate additional elements to bend light to travel a greater distance from the exit pupil of the lens. With less corrective elements comes less aberrations, and the ability to design small, fast lenses with the same or better quality. This shorter flange also gives you the ability to mount a huge range of glass onto it, and there are only a handful of lenses and mounts you can't adapt to it. We will go over lens adapters later on in the video though. There are a number of native RF lenses already on the market and more to come. Canon's new RF offerings are awesome and we are excited to see third-party lens manufacturers adopt the mount as well. Canon are continuing to flesh out their RF lenses, but there are already a range of zooms and primes that will work great on the Komodo. The only downside is that they are a tad on the expensive side, but their optics really are fantastic. There are currently 9 zooms and 11 primes to choose from, with not only the holy trinity of zooms being available, but also some unique options and beautiful primes. I'm really looking forward to testing their new 100mm L series macro prime, as you can control the level of spherical aberration, which should be interesting. Of course, with them being stills lenses, you can control the lens fully as you would expect, you have autofocus capabilities, you can get focus distance readout, and you can even use the image stabilization built into the lenses. These lenses could be a really nice option if you want some of these functions, or if you want something a little bit more compact and can deal with not having cinema lens workflow options without compromising massively on optical quality. RED are constantly releasing new firmware for the Komodo, and as of build 1.5.3, the functionality of native Canon RF lenses has improved massively. Autofocus performance is pretty decent with these lenses, as well as adapted EF lenses. They have also introduced support for the control ring on Canon's native lenses. With this you can control a range of camera functions and it gives the lenses an extra level of functionality for video shooters which is awesome. You can define this to control aperture, shutter, ISO, white balance, LCD magnify, LCD and SDI magnify, false color cycle, peaking cycle and tool cycle. Of course controlling aperture will most likely be the most common but it's great that you have a range of options no matter what you want to use. One very interesting option I could see a lot of owner ops using are the popular 18-55 and 50-135 Fujinon MK cinema lenses. These lenses are designed for E-mount, but Duclos will be able to adapt to RF mount, which we should be able to do in-house as well. These will be a popular option as small, high quality zooms for anyone using Komodo as an AE cam, and they should cover most resolutions modes decently. Another popular set of lenses for the Komodo are the DZO Pictor zooms which are an incredibly well-priced, feature-rich set of cinema zooms. There have been a few third-party lens brands to adopt the RF mount, such as Lauer, who make some really awesome manual focus lenses that currently focus on ultra-wide focal lengths, Samyang and Mica, who give you the option to grab their cinema lenses in RF mount, the Super 35 Mica lenses look like it could be a really nice option once more focal lengths hit the market, and Vazen, who are offering some of their anamorphic primes in RF mount which is great given the recent addition of several anamorphic modes to the Komodo. So all in all, there are so many good options for lenses for the Komodo, but if you want some more advice and more tailored opinions, don't hesitate to get in contact with us. It also may be worth checking out our lens camera coverage tool, which is on our website, so you can see what lenses cover certain modes for the Komodo. Link to that is in the description below. As we mentioned earlier, the RF mount featured on the Komodo is an extremely versatile mount because of its short flange distance. However, one downside of it is the amount of play in the mount, which you will notice when pulling focus. I do wish RED had made a locking RF mount like their EF mount for DSMC2, but there is a way around this. Depending on what mount you use depends on how best to make it secure, but either mounting your adapter to a rod support, a cage, or the camera body itself will help support lenses and reduce play in the mount. Let's start off looking at the different EF mount options. Thanks to other cameras like the USR, R5 and R6 and the C70, there is a good range to choose from. We have the Canon regular straight pass-through RF to EF adapter which comes with the Komodo as a standard 
and that does exactly as it says on the tin. It's no thrills, just good autofocus performance and data pass through. Canon also make their control ring EF to RF adapter, which even with RED's newest firmware does not have the same functionality as the native RF mount lenses. This could be something that RED could add in the future via firmware, but as of June 2021, I would avoid picking up this adapter. When it comes to other straight pass-through adapters, the only other viable option is Kipatai's offerings. There are two main benefits that the Kipatai EF mount holds over any of the competition. That is that it features a locking EF mount and can be attached to the camera body via the chin strap that Kipatai offers for the Komodo. The locking EF mount means that you will have far less play in the EF mount and then being able to attach the mount to the camera body via the chin strap will completely eliminate play in the RF mount. This means with this combination you are getting a rock solid lens setup when you are pulling focus. It's incredibly well built and still features the regular data pass through you would expect from an EF adapter. It is on the pricier side at £490 plus VAT for the adapter and £130 plus VAT for the chin strap, but you are paying for the incredible build and rigidity that it provides. Kipatai also produces a PL version of this adapter which features the same functionality but for PL lenses, but their really unique product is their revolver system that we will talk about later. When it comes to PL mount adapters, there are a few on the market for the RF mount. You have Focus, Wooden Camera, Metabones and 8SIN. The Kipatai with the chin strap is probably the best solution out of the bunch. The Vocast adapter can be purchased with or without a 50mm support bracket that will reduce play in the RF mount as well as a specific Komodo version that attaches to the front of the cage that Vocast also makes with the Komodo. The Metabones deals with internal reflections the best with the Kipatai coming in at a close second and it can also be locked down by using a lens support. It's also well priced for its build quality and performance. 8 are currently offering two different mounts, one lower cost one and one slightly more expensive one which they are calling Evolution. This more expensive mount is made from better materials and allows you to use it with their other Komodo accessories and their lens adapter support to lock the mount down. Wooden Camera also produces one which integrates with their rigging system which we showed in part one of our Komodo accessory series. There are also two different focal reducers on the market currently for Super 35 RF mount cameras one from Metabones and one from Canon. Both are 0.71 focal reducers that feature EF data pass-through and the ability to be locked down. We took a look at both of them in our C70 video last year, so if you want to see how they perform more in-depthly against each other, I've put a link in the description of this video, which will take you to that portion of the video. But long story short, the Canon performs better. The Canon also passes data through more consistently and gives you great autofocus performance currently, so this is what I would recommend picking up. Lastly, but by no means least, are mounts which allow you to use NDs. We mentioned Kipatai earlier and this is their revolver series. The DSMC2 revolver system has been incredibly popular with owners of those cameras and they have brought the same system over to Komodo. This is a very well built adapter and the optical quality of the NDs is great. The revolver uses a cartridge wheel that features different stops of ND. Using regular NDs over variable means you don't get any colour shift, vignetting or cross polarisation artefacts that can be present when using very NDs. You can get the revolver in locking EF or PL and another key benefit of this adapter over the Canon is the ability to attach this chin strap with these adapters so you can eliminate as much play in the mount as possible without needing a top or bottom plate. Kipatai offer three different cartridges which all have different strengths of NDs in and you can also get a diffusion version too. The system with a single cartridge will cost around £1,350 excluding VAT so it is an investment but the optical quality and overall design is worth it. When purchasing a revolver, it is also worth thinking about how the rest of your rig is going to form as the height of the cartridge may affect how you rig your camera out. The revolver doesn't work with the Vocas or Zucuto cages and to get it working with wooden camera, you will need the revolver riser. It technically works with the Ignite Digi Keystone, but you can't change the cartridge. It works with the 8SIN, small rig and tilter cages, all fine though. That's all we have tested currently, so if your solution is missing, I would head over to the Facebook group to see if anyone else has done it or give us a call to see if we've tested your combination since writing this video. We also mentioned that Bright Tangerine have produced a range of supports with different lens mount adapters in part one of this series. These are for the Canon 0.71 Expander, Vocas RF to PL, Metabones RF to PL and Kipatai's Revolver. These supports require you to use the left field side plate kit and top rail or run stop top rail from Bright Tangerine 2. These could be a really good option if you are planning on using any of these adapters and want a nice complete rig from Bright Tangerine. Canon also offer a mount adapter with a drop-in ND filter option. 
which gives you 1.5 to 9 stops of ND. The only downsides of this is that there's no clear option, it's a regular EF mount so you may experience some play in the mount and you can't attach the adapter to anything so you would experience some play on the RF mount. However, considering that the adapter is decently affordable and lightweight with good autofocus performance, it will still be a good option for some. The Red Komodo has plenty of lens options and we hope this video has helped explain all of the great optics and adapters available for it. Let us know what lenses or adapters you are planning on using with your Komodo down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a like and don't forget to subscribe for all of our future content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.